Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on electrical safety part 1. Principles of electricity. Kindly refer to the video on principles of electricity for further details. The patient can be part of an electrical circuit in two ways, via direct or indirect connection. For direct connection, also known as resistive coupling, this is a process where an earthed individual completes a circuit by making direct contact with a live object, such as the casing of a faulty equipment. To receive a shock, a person must contact the electrical circuit at two points and there must be a voltage source that causes the current to flow through that individual. Resistive coupling occurs when any part of the person's body is in direct contact with an electricity source or with an earth object. Electric current then passes through the patient to the earth through a circuit of which a patient may form a part. All electrical equipment is at a higher potential than earth. Thus, electric current seeks to flow to the earth. Sources of electric current may be from faulty equipment or by leakage currents. Leakage currents are usually small as medical equipments are usually well insulated. However, they still carry the risk of causing microshock. Indirect connection, also known as capacitive coupling, occurs when an object is close to a strong AC source, such as an operation theater light. Effects of different types of current applied to a capacitor. For DC, electric current continues to flow only until the positive plate reaches the same potential as the electrical source. For AC, the plates of the capacitor alternates polarity at the same frequency as the current. Capacitative coupling occurs when a body, such as a patient on an OR table, acts as one plate of a capacitor, and an electrical equipment, such as operation theater light, acts as the other plate. Air acts as the dielectric, separating the two plates of the capacitor, AC source, and the patient. If AC is applied to the OT light, the repetitive pattern of charge and discharge sets up a current flow across the gap, and the electric circuit is completed resulting in shock and thermal hazards. Hazards of electricity Macro shock Also known as gross electric shock. Macro shock occurs when large amount of current flows through a person which can cause harm or death. It can occur should a patient become part of an electrical circuit, resulting in current flow through them. Electric currents disrupts the normal electrical function of cells. Macroshock results in involuntary muscle contraction and respiratory paralysis. For DC shock, this tends to produce single muscle spasms. The victim may be blown away from the shock. For AC shock, they tend to cause tetany at 40 to 110 Hz. The victim may be unable to let go of the source of shock, as the flexor muscles are typically stronger than the extensors. Arrhythmias may occur such as ventricular fibrillation, Altered nervous system function may result in confusion and coma. Mechanism of disruption of normal electrical function of cells by macroshock. Electric current is transmitted through the body via electrons associated with free ions in extracellular and intracellular spaces. Normal ionic gradients and cell functions are disrupted by DC and low frequency AC as they cause movement of ions across cell membranes. Ion pumps can cope better with DC voltages compared to AC voltages. Due to the abundance of ion channels and pumps in muscle cells and neurons, they are most susceptible to disruption of function by electrical currents. Thermal injury can occur due to the heat generated from the movement of ions and electrons. The severity of macroshock depends on the strength type and frequency of the current. For AC, the frequency of AC varies according to the country, 50 Hz in UK and 60 Hz in US. Low frequency AC, about 60 Hz, can generate high voltages economically and can be readily transformed. However, it is optimally lethal as it is more likely to cause ventricular fibrillation than high frequency AC or DC. Low frequency AC interferes with ion flux across cell membranes and force ions in both directions. High frequency AC are much less dangerous and causes fewer ion shifts. 
DC causes a unidirectional ion shift across the myocytes that most often results in ventricular standstill rather than fibrillation. Complete recovery from a ventricular standstill can occur if the exposure to DC was brief. If ventricular fibrillation does occur from DC shock, it takes approximately three times as much DC as AC to cause VF. Current density. Current density is increased the greater the current and the smaller the area to which the current is applied. The higher the current density, the more heat is generated and the more severe the burn. Effects of the location of the current density. If it is on the surface of the body, a current of about 100 MA is required to produce ventricular fibrillation. However, if the current density is at the myocardium, only a current of 0.1 MA is required to produce ventricular fibrillation. Path of current flow through the body. AC flowing across the chest is more likely to trigger VF than AC that does not flow across the chest. Current passing through the chest is also more likely to cause tetany of the respiratory muscles and asphyxia. Current passing through the body vertically is likely to cause loss of consciousness and spinal cord damage. Duration of exposure. The longer the duration of exposure to AC or DC, the more severe the disruption of cellular function and the greater the chance of ventricular fibrillation and the more energy will be released and the more tissue is damaged. Timing of shock in relation to the cardiac cycle. AC that reaches the heart during the repolarization phase is more likely to trigger VF. When the normal conduction pathway in a part of the heart is disrupted by an electrical current, that area will no longer depolarize and repolarize via the normal conduction pathway. Aberrant electrical activity occurs, and this results in depolarization of adjacent segments of the ventricles in a random manner causing VF. Impedance of the skin and clothing. Wet skin reduces impedance compared to dry skin. Water contains free ions within it which improves conductivity. Increased contact area and intravenous lines which breaches the skin reduces impedance to current flow. The presence of clothing increases impedance to current flow. This graph illustrates the relationship between current, frequency, and the biological effect on sensation and muscle contraction. Lower current flow is needed to cause muscle contraction and sensation at 60 to 100 Hz than at higher frequencies. At higher frequencies, the polarity reverses very rapidly. There is inadequate time for ion movement to cause muscle contraction or sensation. Thus, diatomy which uses high-frequency current has low risk of causing electric shock. However, high-frequency AC can produce thermal injuries from heat. Physiological effects of mains AC, 50 to 60 Hz, at 1 second contact duration on the human body. This can result in macroshock and microshock. For macroshock, at 1 MA, the subject will feel tingling this is the threshold for perception. At 5 MA, a subject will feel pain. This is the current accepted as the maximum harmless current intensity. At 15 MA, there is tonic contraction of muscles and severe pain. At 30 MA, last chance to let go. The let go current is a current above which sustained muscular contraction occurs and at which an individual will be unable to let go of an energized wire. At 50 MA, tonic contraction of all respiratory muscles occur, leading to asphyxia. There will be severe pain and possible loss of consciousness. At 70 MA, there will be cardiac failure and arrhythmias. At 100 MA, local burns, ventricular fibrillation and electrocution occurs. Respiratory center remains intact. At 1000 MA, extensive severe burns occur. Microshock occurs at 0.05 MA. Ventricular fibrillation will occur if direct cardiac connection exists. Lethal current. Based on Ohm's law, I equals V divided by R, the magnitude of the current that flows is dependent on the voltage and the resistance or impedance. Main sources of impedance during macroshock includes the skin and clothing as mentioned previously. For a particular potential difference, the amount of current flow increases as the impedance decreases. A person standing on an anti-static floor may have an impedance of more than 20,000 ohms. The current flow will be 240 divided by 20,000 or 12 MA 
if that person touched a live enclosure. However, a person standing on a wet floor may have an impedance of 2000 ohms. The current flow will be 240 divided by 2000 or 120 MA if that person touched a live enclosure. 120 MA is potentially lethal. However, it is not enough to blow the fuse and the circuit remains live. Microshock Microshock occurs when very minute currents in the region of 50 to 100 microamps induces ventricular fibrillation if they are applied directly to the myocardium. Microshock occurs only to the electrically susceptible patient that has an external conduit that is in direct contact with the heart. VF due to microshock can be produced by a current that is below the threshold of human perception. It can occur in special situations in which the patient accidentally becomes part of an electrical circuit. Microshock requires an electrical contact applied directly over a small area of the myocardium and which can be earthed through the patient. Direct electrical contact applied to the myocardium can occur via intracardiac devices such as pacemaker lead, central venous catheter, pulmonary artery catheter, and temperature probe in the esophagus. Sources of electric current in microshock may include faulty equipment, even with very low leakage currents, but which is connected to intracardiac devices, or a person holding a pacing wire in one hand while touching the leakage source with the other. Thermal risk. Ignition of flammable materials may cause fires or explosions. Examples of flammable materials include alcoholic skin preparations and drapes. Static electricity refers to accumulation of electric charge on an insulated surface and occurs when electrons are transferred from one object to another by direct contact, such as when rubbing materials together. A spark may form if the charged object is placed near to a conductor, such as an earth object. The charge ionizes surrounding air molecules and conducts electricity across the air gap. Electric currents can also cause burns as the electrical energy dissipates through tissues. The heat generated is directly proportional to current density and duration of current application. Burns are more likely to occur with high frequency AC of more than 100,000 Hz, high current flow, high current density and long duration of current application. Electricity can cause electrical interference of monitoring equipment, such as ECG. These are my references. Thank you.